Today I'm in the mood for some more pavement. Now earlier this year I looked at the track Cut Your Hair. Today I want to look at Cream of Gold which is another favourite pavement track of mine. Love the riff in this one and I think it's one of the best pavement guitar solos as well so let me begin by playing a bit of the track for you. This one's from 1999 and the final pavement album Terra Twilight and this album is perceived as the most commercial of the pavement records I think and it was produced by Radiohead super producer Nigel Godrich and apparently he came in to try and take off a few of the rough edges from pavement and to smooth out a bit of that slacker sloppiness that you associate with them and uh, maybe he did that and uh, I think Stephen Malkmus has expressed a bit of dissatisfaction with how the album turned out but still sounds great to me it's one of my favorite pavement records and the quality of the songwriting is fantastic let's get into this one then and once again we've got an interesting open tuning and lots of interesting guitar parts from Stephen Malkmus I think he's an absolute master at coming up with these quite intricate but very catchy guitar parts so let's get into it Let's start with the tuning and like with Cut Your Hair, like with many pavement songs, we've got an interesting and unusual open tuning. This one is in Dad Abe, Dad Abe. So from low to high, we've got D, A, D, A, B and E. And this seems to be a favourite tuning of Stephen Malcolmus around about this time. And there are quite a few pavement songs in this particular tuning and I suppose what we've got going on here the lowest three strings are the same as drop D so we've got that uh, power chord that you can play on the lowest three strings and then the top two strings are B and E so that's the same as standard tuning and the unusual thing I think is the third string which is an A note and that creates this a major second interval between the third and the second strings so that's quite an un unusual quite an interesting thing about this tuning I'm not sure of anybody else who uses this tuning I'm sure other people must have used it but I can't think of anybody 
off the top of my head I can't think of any other songs other than pavement songs that have got, that have got this uh, particular tuning. Let's move on to this opening riff then and it's a fantastic riff we've got uh... <laughs> based on octaves this riff so because of the tuning we can play octaves at the same fret on the fifth and third string so we're starting down here at the second fret and just taking that shape up the fretboard then down two frets and continuing up then we're going up to the 14th fret interesting melody this one it's really just the vocal melody for the chorus of the song and then in addition to that we've got some occasional lower bass notes on the sixth string as well so we're actually starting off with a three note shape this one here so we're adding the note at the second fret on the sixth string so we've now got frets two two muting the fourth string and two on the third string so first chord is three notes then we've just got the two notes the octaves and then we've got another three note shape and it's the same shape that we had at the second fret now at the fifth fret and then octaves and we just occasionally got some slides between those octave shapes as well so particularly here Also, I think just some open strings from time to time just to smooth the gaps between some of these shapes. So in particular, you can just hear that low D. So really nice riff. Just watch out for the rhythm of that. There's some great accents that you can hear on it as well. He's not just playing every chord with the same kind of intensity so and your muting needs to be good as well so when you're playing those octave shapes you want to be able to hit all of the strings but only have those two notes sounding so that shape there for instance I'm, uh, I'm using my thumb I'm using the Kind of underside of my second and third fingers, maybe my first finger as well, just to keep those unwanted strings from ringing. And then I can hit all of the strings and you're really just getting those two notes coming through. Now for the verse of the song, I'm really just playing the bass line on the lowest string or the lowest two strings. And I'm not sure whether this is on the original recording or not. It's a little bit hard to say, but certainly when you see Malcolm is playing it live, this is what he's doing so it's quite straightforward really just power chords on the lowest couple of strings so so we just fret two five open two three and up to seven five three just repeating that. The chorus is then played the same as before, another verse, another chorus, then we've got a kind of chaotic breakdown section in the middle, might be some extra layers of guitars in there, it's a little bit hard to determine exactly what's going on but I think one of the guitars is just outlining the basic chords, something like this, so... So really just octaves at the 8th, 7th and 10th frets, maybe with the addition of a note on the 2nd string as well. Uh, when you see Malcolm was playing it live, he's playing something something like this perhaps so maybe a bar at the third fret and I'm using my little finger at the sixth fret this nice kind of power chord sound so that would work as 
well. And then building up into the solo, we've got some kind of dissonant stuff happening. So maybe fifth fret on the third string to open. Some dissonant stuff like that so six open open and then we're into the solo and what a solo this is as I say it's one of my favorite pavement solos and it's just a great balance between noise and messiness and melody and hookiness it's just a really memorable solo and the opening phrase is something like this Quite simple to play, just nice and melodic. I've got the ninth fret on the fourth string, and the tenth fret on the third string, and then just coming down to the ninth fret on the third string, repeating that a couple of times. Nine, eight. I'm choosing now to come over onto the fifth string to continue the melody. to you could come down on the fourth string so notes are exactly the same you've got a few options there but it sounds good to me to play it on the the fifth string there so and that really just repeats a couple of times. I think the third time we've got some extra notes. We're picking, uh, we're picking the first couple of notes more times. So we've got this kind of sound. And then as the solo builds, we're onto the third string, and we've got some bendy stuff. So. bending at the 10th fret. I'm hearing an open 3rd string in there as well. So And then as it builds we're just taking that bend a bit higher. So. some kind of chaotic stuff just with some open strings so um, really great so it reminds me a bit of um, kind of Mick Ronson or something towards the end there it's a bit kind of moon age daydream so that's the solo shall I just put all of that together for you <laughs> That's about it for the Malcolmus part. Now just for the sake of completeness I'll go over the other guitar parts that I can hear. I'm assuming that on the original recording in the right hand speaker you've got some stuff played by Spiral Stairs. I'm assuming this is in standard tuning and what I was doing in my little performance at the start of this video is just playing a simple power chord part during the choruses and that went like this. <laughs> So 
power chords on the fourth and fifth strings, just E, coming down to D, G, to F, F, E, G, and F. And it's all got this really nice kind of sustainy sound, so really compressed, super sustainy. So you're just strumming a lot of those chords just once and they're just sustaining. So. sounds like a, an ebo or something but i think it's just really thick compressed distortion and in the verses you can hear this nice single note part and this is really just doubling the vocal melody i think so so quite straightforward this i think we just got two three four on the third string some bending at the second fret on the third string. And then we're back to the chorus with those power chords. And that's really it. At the end of the song, the solo is double track left and right. Not sure whether that is Malcolmus playing both parts or whether one is spiral playing it in standard tuning. You can play the solo in either tuning. You can kind of find the same notes in standard tuning and it works just as well. So. Uh, if you want you can experiment with that. So the gear that I'm using today and for the Malcolmus stuff, the Dad Abe stuff, I've got my Strat. Uh, you quite often see Malcolmus using a Strat so I thought I'd give that a go today just using the neck pickup and this is a 60s reissue Strat, 60 something or other, is it 65? I can't really remember, sorry for the lack of precision on uh, this stuff. So that's the, the Malcolmus tuned guitar and then for the spiral stuff I've got my Jazzmaster it's in standard tuning, that's another 60 something or other reissue. And the amp I'm using today is my Vox AC30 and the guitar tones on Terra Twilight are fantastic and I'm hard pressed to match the, the majesty of some of those Nigel Godrich guitar tones but I'm doing my best here. And I'm using a few pedals as well so for the clean stuff it's not completely clean. I've got my um, Clon clone, the J Rocket Archer on just with the gain set fairly low just to warm up the clean sound. And I'm using some reverb as well. There's a great reverb you can hear on that opening riff. So I'm using my Strymon Blue Sky just on a, a plate reverb setting, I think. I just want to be able to hear that reverb when you dig in and accent some of those notes in the main riff. And then for the noisy stuff, for the solo, I'm just stomping on a rat as well. It's my kind of go-to distortion for these kind of alternative noisy sounds. I've had it for years and years and it always works and sounds really good to me. There we are. I will, of course, be meticulously tabbing all of this stuff out. I'll put that up on my Patreon page for those of you who are interested. Thanks very much for watching. I shall see you next time.